Point of personal privilege, the host here has had uh, friends and family who've uh, experienced uh, tremendous care at Springfield and Hutchinson. So shout out to those two communities and the work they do. And now all the rest of Minnesota communities can complain that they were unfairly excluded from that. But we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll get to them later. All right, Facebook Live viewer Chris wants to know, what about some discussion of transit issues? I think that's a good question. Let's talk about transit. Um, who should we start with you, Senator? Start with tell us a little bit about transit issues in this session and where you see things going. Oh, transit is so important. Um, I had the privilege of being the vice chair of the Transportation Committee for the past four years, and so I have worked very closely on this issue. And what we know from residents, from young to older, um, uh, from businesses and employers, is that the metro area needs the support as does Greater Minnesota. This is not just a metro issue. Um, but people need to be able to get around even if they can't drive a car for some reason. And we have made it so that it's virtually impossible. And uh, you know, the, the, the vision of a fully built out transit system, which just to be clear, is not funded by gas tax or any of that. It's purely, it, the, those are all dedicated to roads and bridges by our constitution. Um, but a robust transit system would be um, just an incredible asset economically um, in so many different ways to individuals and to our workforce and our economy. Senator Benson? Um, well, I'd like to see some improvements in congestion and uh, roads and bridges were very bipartisanly supported mm -hmm. last year and I think we'll see some of that again this year. Um, the bus lines that have been extended up into Ham Lake and East Bethel in my district serve a really unique function. Suburb to suburb um, commuting for employment is growing rapidly. Medtronic is a major employer in the North Metro. Uh, so people live north of Medtronic and now they can ride a bus down to the main Medtronic campus. Um, it, it's flexible. It's meeting the needs of people in our community. And so I think if we keep focused on meeting the needs and not in external drivers, I mean, the, the feds kind of mess with our funding when they say, this is what you must do with these dollars. But if we, again, focus on the essential needs, Shakopee has a big challenge because <laughs> Amazon wants to hire a thousand more people. And so can we get a flexible bus line that gives people good, stable employment it runs frequently enough that you can have a job and get to and from your work, and eventually maybe you move to Shakopee and grow that community. You know, I I, I think that in in the in the conversation about transit, as Senator Kent and Senator Benson have talked about, I think the missing equation is you drive to where your job is. Well, okay, so in communities like Shakopee, Jordan, uh, Prior Lake, in Scott County, you know, we're open for business. And so, you know, for businesses to come and locate in Scott County, it would be much easier for them to say, you know, rather than try and figure out how to tran transport people to Eden Prairie or Plymouth from Shakopee, why don't we relocate or locate a new hub for employees in Shakopee so they drive from Jordan to Shakopee for their, their vocation? I think that's the missing equation in terms of, you know, business development is not so much transit. In terms of where are we positioning our businesses, you know, and south of the river is open for business. And so I would like to encourage people, you know, that are listening to this right now, come talk to us because we've got space. We'll build a building for you <laughs> and we'll house your people. And, and to your point, uh, you know, workforce housing, it's a big deal. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, again, I think, you know, that's, that's part of the equation that isn't often talked about when we talk about transit. Yes, roads, rail, you know, whatever you want to talk, bus lines are important. But let's talk about fundamentally where we people are located. And if you're having to, you know, trans, uh, you know, transport yourself 30 miles to a job, is that really part of the equation? Or if it's more attractive to, you know, take, take a trip that takes five <coughs> minutes to a similar job or the same job within your county or your city, I think that's the missing part of the conversation that we need to address. Can I just respond uh, briefly to Representative Albright? Um, two points. One is you're still saying that people will need to be able to drive t from Shakopee to Jordan or, you know, and so if people either financially or physically are unable to drive a car, then they, that they're still, they have a problem and we're not addressing that, that challenge. Um, but the other thing is I'm, you know, we're in Woodbury, just, you know, 
10 miles just east of St. Paul, and we have jobs, but people can't get to those jobs. And so it is still a challenge, um, and as close as that. And so there are still solutions that are needed. We, there's a lot of document, documented evidence that businesses have avoided moving to our community because of a lack of transit. And that's just not acceptable. We've got to do better. You know, transit's really a key to a to a healthy economic region. And so, in an ideal world, uh, all the new employees, the thousand employees that Amazon needs down in Shakopee, could could buy a home and move <coughs> down there. But that's just not realistic or feasible for everybody. And so, having a transit system that works well, that gives people the freedom to locate where the housing uh, is most affordable for them, or maybe where they're currently located. But I think Senator Benson makes a good point. We really traditionally in the Twin Cities have built a transit system that's really spokes of a wheel. And we need to start to connect those spokes with sort of a spider web and really look at connecting suburb to suburb. So if we have a, a suburb like mine that's really tremendous for housing opportunities to a suburb where there's more jobs so that they don't have people don't have to take transit into the city and then back out on another line. So I think that we could probably find some bipartisan agreement on uh, expanding the bus service to be a little bit more flexible and move in ways that it's not currently moving. But transit is really not just a metro issue. It is a hugely important issue in greater Minnesota where you have elderly people who still want to live in their home and they can live in their home but they need to get to the doctor. And if we don't fund a statewide transit system so that a woman in, living in Nicollet County can stay in her home and get to the doctor's office, then we're really doing a disservice to Minnesotans. And I think it's been unfortunate um, that this issue has become so polarized in the last couple of years. Lots of places in the country, the conservatives are the ones that are pushing commuter rail because it's a way to reduce congestion on the highway. The more people we get on those, at those par parking at the parking rides and taking those lines straight into downtown, the less traffic everybody else has to deal with on Highway 65 or 35W. So it's really a part of, of dealing with limited space on our freeways. You know, 20 hours a day, <laughs> we have enough roads in the Twin Cities. But for those two hours in the morning, those two hours at night, we don't need to build a whole bunch more lanes of asphalt. We need really effective transit that gets people where they want to be. And we just really can't forget that it's not only a metro issue. It is very substantially a greater Minnesota issue that affects people who are older and people who have disabilities. And, and I would concur, and I'm, I'm actually heartened, uh, the fact that the minority leader is in, in, in uh, support of a flexible transit system uh, rather than a rigid or fixed one. Uh, and I, I think support that's both, just to be clear. <laughs> you know, I'll tell you, you fly into a city like Chicago, and isn't yeah. it great you don't have, a, have to rent a car? In Minneapolis, we offer but, this convenience for our um, tourists as well now, which is a big asset for bringing convention business to the state. People love their freedom. And people love the uh, opportunity to uh, go and, and come and go as they choose. And I think that also speaks to the fact uh, that communities want flexibility in terms of route selection and route, uh, the changing of those routes. And so rather than encumber a state or communities with some type of a rigid uh, uh, encumberment uh, to a set schedule, I think it becomes our job to provide to them an opportunity to set the schedule. And if it works, great, but if it needs tweaking, then let's be able to change that to affect a, a better outcome for the people it's serving, as opposed to you've got to drive to a certain place, get on the bus or get on the train, and, and ride a fixed or rigid schedule. Uh, I think particularly in greater Minnesota, that's what they're looking for uh, because of the efficiency and the scale of economy for the dollars spent. Right. Well, and that's the case in greater Minnesota. But when you talk about, I just came from a county meeting with our legislative delegation for Washington County, and um, when you look at the lines that are being discussed, and in our case it's um, the Gold Line Bus Rapid Transit um, uh, bus, uh, it, but it is a fixed line. 
it, those lines have been completely vetted and approved by the local communities. They're the ones who want this. This is, this is something that is coming from the grassroots in these individual communities, that, and they're the ones who are asking for this because they understand the benefits of it to their residents and to their economic future. And the, the benefit that a fixed system brings is a tremendous um, escalation in real estate values. When you look at what happened to the Hiawatha Light Rail Line and the Green Line, really a tremendous amount of investment goes on in those corridors. So I know when we have Republicans in control of the House and Republicans in control of the Senate, we're not going to be doing more light rail projects in Minnesota that the state will participate in and local communities will bear the burden, which is really, you know, not fair to suburban taxpayers, to be honest, because as suburban taxpayers, we do infrastructure investments all over the state. The only thing we get in the bonding bill is light rail that helps our, our communities um, bring people from where they live to where they work. And so, uh, you know, if the, if the Republican bonding bills want to shortchange suburban taxpayers and not give them progress on building out a light rail system, that's their political decision to make. But it's, it's regrettable. So I think, you know, accepting reality, hey, Republicans in, in control of the House and the Senate, we're probably not going to be seeing investment in light rail. But maybe we could do some more on buses if we could. Senator Benson, any further thoughts on this? I don't think suburban folks are going to be upset if their commutes are opened up a little bit. I have a friend who takes the bus from Blaine to downtown Minneapolis every day. She loves it. It's an express bus. And she, she wasn't a bus person until she got her kids out of school and she didn't have to be in 16 different places after work. Now she gets on, she reads a book all the way down, reads a book all the way back. That system meets her needs, meets the needs of all the other people who pack onto that bus. The Olmstead decision came down, it's going to have a major impact on the disability community and we're going to have to have very flexible systems in order to accommodate that law and so I think we should be cautious going forward with fixed rail systems. Um, our population is going to change a lot in very short order. We only have about